Thank you for joining us. We are in Pace 1122 of Chemistry. I want to give you an overview of pages 1 through 10. That's the first Roman numeral. If you open the Pace to the first page, you'll see the table of contents here. And we'll have two major sections in contrast. And then we'll end with section 3 about the atomic structure of matter. Remember my tip, make sure you read through this page carefully, see what's on the outline, do a quick skim through the whole pace, and read the self-test before you start working through the pace. That'll really help you. This is one of the last courses that ACE has where there is a separate pullout packet from the reading part of the pace. You may or may not like this concept but it was uh, the thing for several years and they're going back now to everything just being in one pace and uh, so when they finally do revise this chemistry course I'm not sure when that will be a few years from now probably um, <clears throat> it'll all be combined in one pace the other thing i want to mention is that in the middle of the pace we talked about these teen life principles already and um, the other thing is there is a lab report in the middle so let's talk about that for just a second here as we get started. The first pace did not have a lab report. The newer edition, like biology for instance, and when they come out with the new physical science, the labs are actually going to be on YouTube. And it's going to be very easy to just go to that channel on YouTube for ACE and find the labs for a particular pace. However, physical, I mean, in chemistry, in, they have, um, you can buy one DVD. Now, I have physics here as one DVD. This has the labs for all of the uh, paces. This was what physical science looked like. This was the labs for all the physical science paces. So you buy it as a DVD. It's not cheap. It's like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. Um, <clears throat> I would recommend that you do that, and um, if, if your parents can't afford to do that, or your school can't, can't do that, at least look through the lab. Sometimes they have questions that you can do a quick search for a YouTube video that might be similar to the content, or um, like you could look up something like about electrostatics. It's one of the questions here, number five. Uh, they have a question here, why can nations such as Kuwait and Saudi Arabia use distilled water as a major water source? Even though their water all around them is salt water, how are they able to distill water? And um, those types of questions, you should be able to do a Google search and come up with some answers, and it would kind of tie in with uh, what you're studying in the pace. All right. And usually, I tell my students just to have the lab done anytime during the pace, usually before the self-test though. They have to show me that the lab is done. Now, you do not have to do it right in the middle. When you get to that point in the pace, cl probably closer to the end would make more sense. All right, let me put those two things away in the pace test. And uh, let's talk about some of the main concepts. Um, I like, I drew a quick chart here, but uh, they have a chart in the pace <clears throat> that looks like this. Helpful guide, okay? Helping you visualize what we're going to talk about. All matter can be divided into two categories. Now you know that the prefix homo means the same, hetero means different. So homogeneous matter has the same appearance throughout. And there are three types, elements, compounds, and solutions. All of this was covered in the physical science paces and uh, Maybe you just did that last year, so maybe it's still kind of fresh in your mind. Heterogeneous matter has a different appearance in the different parts. So that would be like a mixture and a colloid. You can actually pick out the different things. Whenever I think of a mixture, I think of um, Italian salad dressing, you know, where if you let it sit, <clears throat> it separates. You have the seasonings fall to the bottom. You have the oil, the vinegar. But if you shake it, um, it may for a little while look like it has the same appearance, but it'll soon settle out and you'll see the differences. So mixtures. We're going to come back and uh, talk about um, which elements you need to have memorized 
in this piece, and I'm going to give you some tips on how to memorize them. But first of all, I want you to look here on page two. This is a good chart here as well, showing the four phases of matter, and then the phase changes that go from solid to liquid, or from gas to liquid, condensing from liquid to gas is boiling, and it shows, that this is an interesting way of diagramming it, helping you visualize these concepts that you did learn before. Um, at the top of page three, we talk about mass. <clears throat> and the atomic number and the atomic mass. So I took out my periodic table here, and uh, I want to talk for a minute here about this element, Fe. So what is Fe? Fe is actually iron. Uh, maybe you've heard the prefix or the word ferrous before, all right? And that um, is the root word from which we get iron, but that starts with Fe. So they took that from another language. The first number is the atomic number. That's here on the bottom. And that tells us which number it is on the chart. The atomic number also tells us, if I can get the cap off this marker, the number of protons. So if we add one more proton to an atom, we change it from being iron, it would become cobalt. If we added one more, to go from 26 to 27, be a whole new element. So this is the identifier of what element we're talking about. And the atomic number then is very clear, that's the number of protons. That also happens to be the number of electrons because atoms are neutral. They're not, they don't have a charge to them in nature. Well, then what is this number? This is the mass, and it's so small that we don't measure it in grams. We measure it in a, they came up with a whole new system called atomic mass units. And uh, they explain the pace, how they came up with that, and you can read about that. But the point is, this has a mass of 56. And if we subtract the number of protons, okay, so 56 minus 26 would give me 30, so that would be the number of neutrons, all right? And so this is the mass number. So the mass number is the total of protons plus the neutrons. Maybe you remember this from physical science, but the electrons actually have no mass. They are so, their mass is so small compared to protons and neutrons that it really doesn't even get calculated in as part of the mass of the atom. But the uh, protons plus neutrons is the mass. Now what if I took away a neutron and I just had 50, or 29 neutrons plus the 26 protons? Then I would have a mass of 55. Still iron because we still have a mass, I mean an atomic number of 26. And that's the number of protons. When we have two atoms that have a different number of protons, therefore a different mass, we say that these are two different isotopes, isotopes, all right? And you'll be reading about that as you go through this chapter as well. <clears throat> I want to uh, draw your attention as you're reading through here to page seven, compounds. So a compound is when two elements come together in a very particular way to form something that's very different from either of the elements that make it up. Hydrogen is a very explosive gas, very lightweight, very explosive. Oxygen is needed for anything to burn. You would think if you put hydrogen and oxygen together that it would be an explosion for sure. But when they bond together chemically, they form water, which we use to put out fires. Okay, very different. Sodium is a metal that uh, is highly reactive. Chlorine is a poisonous gas. You put the two together though, and they form sodium chloride, which is table salt. And not only does it make your food taste better, but your body needs sodium chloride. Here's carbon and oxygen. Put the two together, and we have carbon dioxide, which we breathe out. Maybe you remember this from um, biology. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. See the cho for chocolate? And this is the energy that plants produce and that they can live on. C6H12O6, this is called glucose. <clears throat> All right, I'm just showing you some examples of compounds. 
Now, if you turn to page um, eight, there are some laws here. Law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportions, law of multiple proportions. You need to read those carefully, make sure you understand the differences. I will give you a clue here that on the test, they are going to give you a description of one of these, well, of actually all of them, and you have to know the name of the law to be able to write it out. They're going to review it on the checkups and self-test coming up, but um, I do want you to read that carefully. Part of learning, remember we talked about this in the beginning, part of what I want you to learn here during this year is how your brain works and how can I learn things and master content. And one of the ways is taking things that seem very similar and finding a way of making the, you know, understanding the difference between them. How are they similar? How are they different? Okay. And kind of work through and, and uh, solidify in your mind what distinguishes one from the other. So for instance, we have the law of definite proportion and then we have the law of multiple proportion. Just looking at the words sounds confusing. Sounds like we're saying the same thing or very similar. I always tell my students that the law of definite proportions means it's kind of like a recipe. If you are going to make, whether you're making one atom or you're making a gram worth or you're making a mole of something or you're making a large batch of something, if we're going to make hydrogen uh, and water go together to form warm, hydrogen and oxygen to form water, we need two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. That is the recipe to form water. We can do it small scale or we can do it large scale. We have to follow the recipe. So it's just like when your mom makes chocolate chip cookies, she gets out the recipe, she might do a small batch, cut everything in half. She might double the recipe or quadruple. It's what my wife used to do when we had kids at home and make a huge batch from the same recipe. So the recipe, you might write that in the margin on page eight next to definite proportions. Now the law of multiple proportions means we can use the same ingredients to make different recipes. So your mom might pull out the same ingredients Maybe she might make biscuits one time, she might make muffins another time, she might make pancakes, she might even make some kind of a, a cake or maybe um, tortillas or whatever. But a lot of the ingredients are the same. But because you're mixing them in a different proportion to each other, you're following a different recipe, you come up with a different end product. So that's what I'm kind of illustrating here, and your pace talks about this as well. We have the same two elements, nitrogen and oxygen, forming either nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, and here we have dinitrogen oxide. All three of those are possible in nature, okay? And so it's just that they are being combined in different quantities according to different recipes to form, but it's from the same ingredients, the same elements forming those compounds. All right, this section is not hard. I don't need to give you a lot of explanation. Read it carefully. There's a section then on page 10 about solutions. Basically a solution, think about a solution as salt water. That's the easiest. You just put a couple grains of salt in your drinking water, stir it around, and you may not taste it, or you may. If you have really sensitive taste, you may say, ooh, I taste a little bit of salt in here. You put a teaspoon in, mix it around, now you'll definitely taste it, right? You put two tablespoons in and stir it around, now it's even saltier. It's still salt water. Whether it's two grains of salt or two tablespoons of salt, we still have salt water. That's called a solution, okay? And in solutions, usually you, there's no easy way to separate it out. There is a way, a physical way to do it, but um, it's not, they don't just automatically separate out, they stay mixed together. Study the examples there on page 10, read that carefully, answer your questions. Um, I'm gonna come back here in a minute, a minute for me, and make a video for you about the elements on page six because there are 28 of them that they tell us we need to have memorized all right see you in a little bit